Welcome back to the vlog. Everybody in the poker world knows who Brad Owens is, and he has a, a famous hand he is associated with. And uh, I'm not going to use his term, but uh, I'm sure you all know what it is. I love chickadees and chicken nuggets. Anyway, I got dealt that particular hand, oh, seven or eight times during the evening. I'm not kidding. I think I was dealt every single combination of that hand. There are a lot of times where I think about traveling and seeing other casinos and playing in them because I hear the action is good. And then on days like today, I realize why Capital Casino is my home. I got paid off. And every time, except for one hand, I got my money in good. Sometimes I won, sometimes I lost. But I got my money in good every single hand but one. So sit back, relax, enjoy. This is a fun one. We get into the 1-3 game for $500. Looks like a pretty good lineup. First hand we look at is two jacks. We're in the big blind. There was an early position limp. Someone raised to 13. Small blind puts in the call for 13. So there's $33 of dead money out there. I put 40 on top. So I made it 53 total. And it quickly gets folded around. So we, uh, we win this small pot with uh, no battle. We're happy to take it down. An extra $33 in our, into our stack. A couple of hands later, I look down at two nines on the button. There is an $11 straddle from a player directly across the table from me. He seems to be very active so far. The player to my right with a short stack puts in the call, and I raise to 40. It gets folded back around to the $11 straddler in the middle position and he puts in the call for the 40 and now it's back to the player on my right uh, he goes all in for 34 dollars so there's going to be a 12 dollars side pot and uh, we're going to head off to a flop uh, three ways but one player is all in so i'm heads up with the person in middle position so we're headed off to a flop with 110 in the main and 12 dollars on the side to a beautiful flop of 644. Excellent flop for an overpair. And when the player checks to me, I'm definitely going to put a C bet out. And I made it about half pot, which was $50. So I don't really expect him to be calling too much, but he kind of looks like he really wants to mix it up. So he puts in the call. I think this is a pure float on his part. And we see a turn card of a jack of spades. He checks it again. And at this point, I decided to check back. There's a chance he has a jack. But most likely, he has air. And he's going to fire the river when a blank comes. So three diamonds comes on the end. And sure enough, he bets quickly for $115. Now, as I said, I checked it back on the turn just to make sure I can call this river bet. So I'm definitely calling. But I decided to study him for a little bit and uh, see if I can pick up any additional information on his body language. It's always nice to get to study your opponent when he's bluffing. And uh, sometimes you pick up on the way he holds his cards, the way he sits, the way he reacts. I toss in the chip. He says, good hand, you got me. And I roll over my nines. He says, wow, that's a good call. Was it because of pot odds or a read? So I said it was a little of both but mainly it was an odd read. Some of you might be wondering why I didn't make the uh, players show their hands when uh, they said I was good and I knew I was good. But if they're a rec player and just there to have a good time, I am not going to embarrass them by making them show. Uh, they have a tendency to play better if you continually embarrass them because nobody likes to be embarrassed. But if they can play awful and not be embarrassed about it, they're going to continue to play that way. So that's why I don't make people show when I can. And I think it's, um, it's one of the finer things you learn after many years of playing poker is that if someone makes mistakes, you want them to continue making mistakes. So we look down at two jacks and a hijack, and there is a $10 straddle, and there are two people who call for the $10. So with $34 in the pot, I decided to raise to 50, just trying to narrow the field. The table's been fairly active so far. It gets folded back around to the straddler, 
It was the same player from the previous hand who uh, tried to bluff me. He's been very active in the short time I've been at the table, so I don't mind him coming along and putting in the call. I like to get action from a player like that. So he puts in the call, so does the player in seat one, and now the player sitting to my right thinks about it for a little bit, and they finally decide on a call also. So we're headed four ways to a flop with $204 in the pot. So good size pot, I got position, I got a premium hand, just need a premium flop. Jack was in the door as they flipped over the cards and there was another one right behind it. So we flop quads, yeah, here we go. First player checks, second player donk leads for $27. Very small bet, but you know, heck, we got someone betting into us when we flop quads. We can't be complaining. The player to our right tosses his cards away and here there's really nothing we can do but put in the call. Hopefully he has something like a big draw, maybe king, queen of diamonds, or maybe just a lone 10. Well, I look around and think about it for a little bit, making it look like I have some sort of decision, but I put in the obvious call for $27, hoping to get an overcall, and then we do get an overcall. So we're gonna go three ways to a turn card. Hoping for a diamond. Come on, put out a little diamond. Maybe that guy, the action player, is gonna be in there with a flush draw. Turn card comes is a six of spades. So not the best card, but it isn't a scare card. So maybe the person to my right will continue. First player checks, player to my right continues for $50. Once again, nothing here to do, but put in the call, hoping for an overcall and we do get a overcall. So I'm not sure exactly what they have, but I'm definitely hoping they get there. So river card comes is a deuce of diamonds. And now the first player goes into the tank and I'm just going, oh, please shove, please shove. I just want to see you shove at once. And he thinks and thinks and thinks and he finally decides on a check. The player to my right looks like he is totally disgusted, like he missed his draw. I think he had a hand something like king queen without diamonds and He's down to his last $115, and his only option to win the pot at this point is to bluff at it. So he goes ahead and bets out 115, and he's all in. Nothing I can do here uh, except put in the call and hope the player behind me was checking a flush and wants to check raise all in because he has another 250 behind. He quickly folds and I just turn over my hand to let the player know that he doesn't have to show his. And we take down this nice pot with quads. It wasn't even good enough for the high hand. There were four aces already on the board. A few hands later, we look down at Pocket Jacks, the Brad Owen special. So here we go. We have one limper. We raise to 15. Small blind puts in the call. Big blind puts in the call. And so does the original limper. So we're gonna head in four ways to a flop with 63 in the pot and the flop comes down queen, queen, deuce with two spades. Not a bad flop for our hand. As long as someone doesn't have a queen, we should be in pretty good shape. It gets checked around to us. We're gonna continue for $15. No need to bloat the pot. The small blind puts in a very quick call and everybody else folds. So I'm a little bit worried about the small blind already and the turn card comes as a deuce of hearts. So now if he has a deuce or a queen, he definitely has us beat. He ends up leading for $20. My gut's telling me this could be a queen. My uh, sense of not getting blown off a of pie is telling me it could be something like pocket threes through pocket tens. River card comes as a 10 of diamonds. He leads quickly again for $25. Everything tells me that this is a queen. And... I should really fold this even though it's only $25. I know I'm getting six to one on this, but I haven't been off on my read all day long. My read says he has it. I should fold. I go in the tank and finally succumb to calling off $25. And sure enough, he shows me a queen. So believe it or not, I got other hands besides pocket queens and uh, pocket jacks. Here I have sevens under the gun, open for a raise to 15. Everyone folds to the big blind who puts in the call. Flop is a good one. It comes ace, 10, seven, rainbow. I thought about checking this back, but I really want to build a pot if he has an ace. So I start off with a $15 bet. 
he didn't have an ace, so I wasn't probably going to get much money out of him anyway. This is probably the most interesting hand of the day. Um, paint the picture for you. The player on the button looks like a very solid player. I haven't played with him before, but by the way he acts, the way he uh, makes his bets, his sizing, and the way he tacks people's ranges is very good. So I'm thinking that he is a very talented uh, player, and this is our first pot we tangled together. There's a limp from an under-the-gun player who's been playing just about every hand. I put in a raise to 15. The uh, villain on the button puts in the call, and it's folded back around to the limper who also puts in the call. So we're going three ways to a flop of 884. It turns out to be a pretty good flop for our specific hand, and not a great flop for our range, unless we have specifically an overpair. One check two, I lead out for $20, and the button puts in the quick call. Being that he's a solid player, he could be playing hands such as 8-9 suited, 7-8 suited. Would definitely have me crushed at this point. But he would probably also call with hands like 5-6 or 6-7 suited. He might even just be floating here with the intention of taking it away because he knows that a lot of my range consists of cards like Ace-King, Ace-Queen. And if a small card comes, I might not be able to defend. So it comes back around to the original limper. He ends up holding. So we're going to go heads up to a turn card of a 10 of clubs. At this point, there is a definite possibility that he has me beat, maybe with a 8. And I decided to check it over to him just to see how he would do. And he assembles a bet for $55. Now I've been watching him carefully for the last half hour. And I can tell he really knows his way around a poker table. And this kind of feels like he is trying to take this one away from me. I don't think he would bet this big with an 8. And I don't think he would bet this big with a 10. I think he would bet this big with a bluff, though. Thinking back on his initial call and what kind of range he would be defending with on the button, I'm thinking that hands like 7-6 suited would be optimal for this type of bet. He picks up an additional 4 outs with a double gutter. And it's really hard for someone who might have just two overcards to defend such a bet. I decided to play this like I had an overpair. And what I would do is I would flat. And him being a good player, knowing that I flatted, would probably make him think that I have an overpair. And it would be extremely difficult for him to bet again without actually having an eight, unless he improves greatly on the river. So I put the call in. We get to see a river card with $199 in a pot of a jack of diamonds. Stick him with a plan. I check it over to him. And if he has a hand like 6-7 suited, it's going to be really difficult for him to fire that barrel. He thinks and he goes into the tank for quite some time. And I think he's just debating on whether he should try the bluff or whether he should give up. He knuckles back. I show him the pair of fours and he mucks right away. I never did find out exactly what he had, but I think I was pretty close. So we don't get jacks, but we get queens again. It's a nice hand to wake up to. We're in middle position. We raise to 15 after one early limper. And uh, we end up going three ways to a flop. A player on the button and the original limper put in the call. Flop is pretty good. It comes jack, 10, 6 with two hearts. We do have the queen of hearts, so we have some uh, flush draws blocked. When it's checked to me, I'm just going to continue for $25. And the button puts in a quick call. Now the uh, original limper under the gun, he jams his stack. He only has 75 total. So he's going with his hand. I really don't want to give a cheap draw to the other player on the button. I figure this is a good chance to isolate him in case he has a hand, you know, like a flush draw or maybe some sort of straight draw. So I re-jam to isolate. And as soon as I do, he mucks his hand fairly quickly. And uh, we get it heads up with the all-in player. And we get to see a run out of a 10 of spades and a 9 of diamonds. Doesn't seem to help him. He turns over ace, jack of clubs, so we take this one down. 
After that, we took a little break, had some dinner, and about an hour later, we returned to the game, and firsthand in, we get Jax again. The thing is, when we came back to the game, we were in a different seat, and it is probably the worst seat for vlogging. It's seat six. So the player to my left has a good view of my phone, and the player to my right had a good view of my phone, so I decided not to record. So you have to forgive me for not getting actual footage, but this is basically what happened. There's a six dollar strato, we open the 20, we get two callers from the button and the big blind. Flop comes 1076. Now the big blind just jams for $65 all in. I put in the quick call, the button folds out. Run out comes with a king of hearts and a queen of diamonds. I figure it's pretty safe until he decides to turn over his hand and he shows the queen nine offsuit for making a pair of queens on the river. I got the end of this hand on camera, but this is the way the beginning of it went. I was under the gun, open for a race of 15, and I got four callers. Flop comes six, nine, deuce, rainbow. Since this doesn't hit my range, I check. The first player bets 45 and was called by the hijack, the button, and the big blind. And when it gets back to me, I just have to think that my hand is good here. There's not too many combinations of two pairs that I'm going to be facing. So if someone didn't flop a set, I think I'm way ahead. I'm a little worried about 7-8 having a straight draw. So when it gets to me, I think I only have one move left, and that is to jam. So I end up putting in the jam. The first person who let out folds quickly, so I was worried about them having a possible set. The next person in the hijack thinks for probably about 30 seconds before putting in the call. And now it's the person on the button, and he looks like he's doing some math. He is a vlog supporter named Tabriz. And um, as soon as he started thinking, I figured he had that straight draw. I think he's getting the right price to call, but it's an awfully big bet. He decides to release it. The big blind folds out, and we see a run out that's very favorable for an overpair. It comes a three and then a deuce. The person who called us called us with king six offsuit. Gotta love the action. The action in this last hand wasn't abnormal for the game. There were quite a few hands that went very similar to this. People making extremely light calls, uh, very weak bluffs, uh, bad folds, you name it, it was going on. It was one of those games you just had to play in. So I played for another hour. I ended up picking up jacks three more times during that time period. The afternoon session was pretty good. We made 765, took a little break, came back and made 455 later that evening for a grand total of 1220. Thanks for watching guys. I really do appreciate your support. If you haven't liked and subscribed or commented or shared or all any of those things or hit the notification bell, please do so. It really does help out the channel. And this was a fun vlog to make because I just ran really good, but, uh, there, there are a lot of work to put together and every little thing helps. So if you guys can just uh, hit those buttons for me and keep on tuning in and I'll just keep on producing the best quality content I can and we'll both be happy. Good luck at the tables. We'll see you next time.